But what I do want to talk about is this business of changing in frequency, because the emotional charge, the emotional charge that is associated with the uh, habit is something that uh, if, if and when we change that, this can greatly enhance and quicken the results of fulfilling our desire. So if you have uh, a habit of, again, let me use the example of lack, you have a habit of lack, then uh, what we're really talking about there is it's a frequency. So everything is energy. And when I say everything is energy, let me just take a step back so this is clear. When you dream at night, that dream is entirely consciousness. I hope that that's clear to you, right? When you wake up from the dream, there's no residue out there of the dream because the dream was only consciousness within you. So everything that the dream, all the substance of the dream is only consciousness. So if you are dreaming uh, of a dream, whatever your dream universe is, right? That whole dream universe and all the people and places and events and everything, all of that is consciousness. Hopefully that's clear. So the same is true now of the waking state. The waking state is exactly the same. I, I point this out because people often are so hung up on viewing the waking state as somehow objective and external to them because they view themselves and identify so strongly with their body mind, which has a, a, you know, a space, a point, it's a point in space time. They identify so strongly with that that it makes it difficult for them to see how, how it is that they actually have the ability to change their life. But when you can take a step back and realize that just like the dream, this too is composed only of consciousness and you are that consciousness. So that means this body is consciousness. You are not this body. You are consciousness dreaming this body, identifying with this point in consciousness in the dream. This whole dream universe is consciousness dreaming. Okay. So I point this out because then we can start to see that it, all of the phenomenal reality, all of it is composed of what? Subjective, it's all subjective phenomena, meaning that everything that you know, everything that you experience, everything that you come into contact with, you actually come into contact only with through your subjective senses and your thoughts, right? Like, how do you know about anything? It's only because you see it, taste it, touch it, smell it, hear it, and think about it. So those are the only ways that you come into contact with anything. Like right now, your mind might say, oh yeah, but there's that guy over there in that video. But where is that guy over there in the video? Where is over there? Over there is, is known only subjectively here. It's just an idea of over there that's being perceived because there's a projection of three dimensions. But actually what's being experienced is what? Just light, sound, whatever you would call the tactile sense. Okay, but these, these and thought, et cetera, all of those are really just energy. We can measure them as energy. They all are frequency, right? It's all energy and that, and that energy is vibrating at a particular frequency. So color red is vibrating, it's energy vibrating at a particular spectrum of, of of frequency, right? Blue, green, yellow, they're all just different frequencies, meaning the vibration is happening faster or slower. The same with sound. What what makes a, a, a one pitch different from another? It's the frequency with, it, with which it's vibrating. Everything is like that. The thoughts, right? Your thought waves can be measured as, as frequency. So everything is frequency. Everything is energy vibrating with different frequencies. So now that means that lack is a frequency, abundance is a frequency. Now what keeps that frequency, what keeps your attention stuck on a particular frequency of lack in this example? It could be whatever. It's either 
just through repetition, or it's because of the intensity of the emotion. And I'll actually suggest that, F, that ultimately it's only about the intensity of the emotion because with enough frequent, with enough repetition, there's an intensity, there's a charge that's built up that, that forms an attachment, which we could call an emotion. So here's the key to the whole thing is the, the emotion and the intensity of that emotion. And that emotion is also a frequency. It's all just energy. So the energy is, in a sense, it's homogenous, it's neutral. It's not good nor bad. It's not this nor that. It's only turned into that because we grab onto it through a particular frequency. So if you don't like it, you want to change it. So notice that when you, if you struggle with lack, what's the emotion that you have connected with that? We could call it fear. You could call it whatever, it doesn't matter, but whatever you call it, notice that you don't like it. It feels bad to you, but there's a strong charge there. That is what is actually pulling your attention to it because that emotion is paired with that frequency of lack in this example. You can use this with whatever your thing is. It doesn't it have to be lack. I'm just using lack as an example. Okay, so see that it's the emotion and the, the, the intensity of the emotion that draws your attention there. Because if you weren't afraid, you would not give attention to that. Can you see that that's true? If you were not afraid of lack, you wouldn't give your attention to it because it's no good. It's not interesting at all. Who wants lack? The only reason that lack exists is because it has to exist in contrast to abundance. Abundance is the positive of the, it's the positive pole. Lack is the negative pole. That doesn't make it good or bad in some absolute sense because good and bad are also just uh, another polarity. But we can just see that all polarities have a positive and negative, and we actually have a preference for the positive versus the negative. Again, that's not saying that negative is bad in some absolute sense. It's just saying that that's the nature of all things is that they exist in these polar opposites. So it has to be that of all polar polarizations, we have, have a preference for one and, and, and not the other, but the other has to exist for the other to exist because they, they can only exist relative to one another. So we wanted to know abundance, but in order to know abundance, we, there has to be lack. But the problem is we've attached to lack because we have this strong emotional charge that's associated with lack. And so it just keeps sucking our attention over there. So we just keep giving more and more energy to it. So we keep experiencing that as real. We say, look, it's objectively so, but it's not objectively so. Objectively so is only a projection of your, of your subjective reality. There is no independent objective anything because the objective is only the polar opposite of the subjective. When we put our attention on the objective, we usually feel bad. What we want is to keep our attention on the subjective because that's what's going to empower us to then reorganize things so that we can feel consistently good. So now we've identified in this example, I, I have a tendency to put my attention on lack. I don't want to do that. I feel bad when I do that. Why do I keep doing it? Well, because I've paired this strongly charged negative emotion with it. And so my attention just keeps getting sucked over there. Well, now, well, put all this together, and hopefully this will make sense. That it's all just energy. We have the ability to change the frequency. Now, again, I know that people sometimes talk about this, talk about changing your frequency, but then you say, well, great, but how do I do that? Well, I'm going to explain that to you. So you first want to realize that it's all just energy. That's why I'm saying that over and over and over. See that it's all just energy. You can change the frequency 
through which you are experiencing or expressing that energy and you get a different so-called objective outcome. It's all, all light is energy. It doesn't matter whether it's expressed as blue, red, green, orange, yellow, or whatever. It's all energy. The difference is only the frequency with which it's vibrating. You can change that. I haven't told you how yet, but I'm just pointing out that you can change it because you have to understand it's all energy. So when you have this strong, negatively charged um, uh, emotion that's pulling your attention to what you don't want, clearly you want to change that frequency. So fear, you want to change. Every time that you're experiencing fear, what do you want? You want to experience, call it what you want, peace, security, freedom, happiness, oneness, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. See, it's your business because it's up to you. It's, just, it's subjective. So remember, you have to trust your intuitive guidance on this. I'm just pointing out something to you. Now, you have... you. You notice, though, that your attention goes to that, that negative emotional uh, charge. You want to free it from that uh, frequency. So the, the strength of the charge, it just indicates how much energy, right? It's just like the amplitude. But the frequency is what determines wh what you perceive it as. You're perceiving it as fear. So how are you going to change this? Well, number one, you want to release it, dissolve it back into its neutral state, just energy. Liberate it from that frequency. How do you do that? Relax deeply. So the the, the thing about this is that that, that habit of um, that particular, perceiving that particular frequency, in this example, fear, is sustained because it's happening unconsciously and it involves, it hijacks your whole system. Okay, so your thoughts are hijacked, your, your mental images are hijacked, your physicality is hijacked, you get tense, your breathing changes. This is just by definition, right? Fear, the experience of fear is synonymous with those changes. If you're if you're totally relaxed and you're not thinking anything fearful, then you're not experiencing fear by definition. When you're experiencing fear, your whole system is hijacked to produce that state. It causes you, your whole system, to sympathetically resonate with the same frequency as fear. So you want to change that. You can change that by relaxing. So this is like a yogic secret. Okay, this is what the yogis do. This is this is how they do it. They they've learned that it's possible to relax very deeply and that all systems are interconnected. Everything is happening simultaneously and if you produce a change anywhere in that, then you change the whole thing. So a very powerful way to do this is to notice your breathing. Because remember I said, everything is hijacked by fear, by, by whatever the state is, but I'm using fear in this example. So everything is hijacked by fear. So your breathing necessarily has to change. When your breathing is neutralized, the fear has to has to dissipate. The energy is released. That frequency is no longer the 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 vehicle through which that energy is expressing. So the intensity might remain, but the frequency is no longer there. So again, how do you do that? Well, there are many ways, but I'm suggesting right now the breath is one very powerful way. You just notice the breathing. Because awareness is the is the is the agent of change. You have to be aware, otherwise the change won't happen. So just notice your breathing. So you could try this out right now. You could think about something where 
think about some minor stressor. Don't think about a, a big one, just a minor stressor. And notice that in order to experience that stressor as stressful, your whole system has to be hijacked. But then notice your breathing. Let your breathing just be totally relaxed and natural. Don't try to breathe in any particular way. Just let your breathing be relaxed and natural. And in order to do that, of course, you have to be very aware. You have to be so aware that you're aware of every attempt to change your breathing, even in very subtle ways. And you, you keep relaxing all of those impulses so that you're just allowing the natural spontaneous breath because nature knows exactly how to produce perfect balance. And if allowed to do so, will do so always. <laughs>